Retiring before you turn 65, the standard retirement age, can be pretty appealing, obviously. And if you have tons of assets, it's not a problem. But if you have less than tons of assets, it can be a little bit more challenging. Now, it's doable, but it's tricky. Okay, now obviously we all understand that a longer retirement is going to cost more than a shorter retirement, clearly. But beyond that, there are some key variables that pack a lot of weight that could either tip the scales in your favor or out of your favor. And today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at four big things that you want to be eyeballs wide open on if you want to retire before age 65. Oh, and I'm also going to chuck in an extra tip at the end for couples. But anyway, to illustrate all this, we're going to use a test couple and we're going to come up with a bunch of assumptions for them. Our test couple today is Tyler and Skylar Weiler, two 54-year-olds from Victoria who want to retire next year at 55 with $7,000 a month after tax. And they are going to live precisely until they turn 88. They have a balanced portfolio earning 5.19% a year, and we're going to peg long-term inflation at 3%. We're going to give both of them full old age security benefits when they turn 65, since they both lived in Canada their whole lives. And for CPP, we're just going to give them 80% each of the maximum possible amount that they could get, since they both work full-time right out of school, but they're retiring early, so they're not going to get the maximum amount. Lastly, we'll make it so that they don't own a home. We'll just keep this simple. And that'll help us see all the raw numbers here without having that big backup asset to rely on. And that's good enough. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds because the point of this video isn't to focus on the details, but on the larger concepts. And I think we have no choice but to start with the biggest one. Number one, to retire early, you either need way more money or way less expenses. Again, this is obvious, but let's take a look at this in color so that you can see it in play. As mentioned, Tyler and Skylar were wanting $7,000 a month for their whole retirement. And so to get them there, I played around with the numbers a bit and found that if they have 1.6 million between their RRSPs, TFSAs, and non-registered investments, that that would take them just over the finish line. They would be at 101% on track. And what that means in plain English is that they have slightly more investments and income than they need to reach their goal of $7,000 a month all the way through their retirement. Now, just as a quick comparison, if they had the exact same setup but plan to retire at the quote unquote normal age of 65 instead of 55, then they would only need about 940 grand to get them to the same spot. So retiring a decade earlier costs them an extra 660 grand or so not cheap. Of course, these are ballpark numbers because the amount of money that you have and all of the different kinds of accounts you have will affect the amount of taxes you pay, etc. But you get the idea. Now, what if they were able to reduce their expenses so that they didn't actually need $1.6 million to pull this off? Well, let's see. Let's drop their investment portfolio from $1.6 million to $1.2 million. Let's shave off $400K. Now let's play with our income slider and see what we'd need. Reducing it by 10% from $7,000 a month to $6,300 a month would not cut it. They'd only be 82% on track. However, dropping it 20%, which would be a drop of $1,400 a month, would do it. Gets them to 103% on track of their goal. But that's a big drop. That would take them from $7,000 a month down to $5,600 a month. So again, to retire early, you either need way more money or way less expenses. Or I guess you could have way more money and way less expenses, if you want. Number two, pension dynamics are huge. In Canada, we have two public pension plans, Canada Pension Plan and Old Age Security. And the normal start date for both of these pensions is age 65 which is pretty much why all of us think of the standard or normal retirement age as 65. Now, you can take CPP as early as age 60 if you like, but if you do that, the amount that you get will be 36% less for the rest of your life. Now, I've done full deep dive videos on how these pensions work, so I'm not going to repeat it all here. But the moral of the story is that you can take CPP as early as age 60 if you don't mind getting the smaller amounts in perpetuity. But with old age security, you cannot start it any earlier than age 65. 
So if you are planning to retire before 65, then there could be a big chunk of time where you do not have those pensions coming in to help you pay the bills. And therefore you have to come up with all of that money on your own, which usually means pulling it from your investments. Let me illustrate. Here's Tyler and Skyler's original situation again. Each one of these columns is a year of their life and the different colors tell us where the income is coming from each year. So notice that in 2035, when they're both 65 years old, their CPP and OAS kick in, and that's making up a big chunk of their income. The rest of their income is coming from their various investment accounts. But the decade before that, there is no CPP and OAS, and so all of their income is coming from their investment accounts. They have to foot the entire bill themselves, and so it drains their investment accounts substantially while they're still fairly young. Now, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that this is how it works. That first chunk of time when you have no help coming in from government pensions can drain your accounts pretty hard. And that's one of the key reasons that you need to have so much money to retire early. Now, what if they started their CPP early at age 60 to help foot the bill a little earlier? Well, in this case, it doesn't help at all. It actually hurts. It dropped them from 101% on track to 95%. Shish, no bueno. And there's a couple key reasons for that. The first is the fact that by starting CPP five years early, they lose 36% of their benefit for the rest of their lives. And the second is their life expectancy. We have them living until age 88. So that's a long time to take a 36% haircut. Fact is, the longer you live, the more it makes sense to have a higher CPP benefit because you will simply collect more for longer, especially since CPP benefits are indexed to grow with the cost of living. Now, you might have a different situation and that may not apply to you, and that's fine. You gotta know your own numbers, but the fact is, pension timing is a big deal. And we haven't even touched on private pensions that you can get through your employer. For most people that have these plans, they can take a hit on how much they can get from their defined benefit pension plans if they start them before their early 60s. And for some people, it can be a huge hit. So a lot of people, even if they hate their job, end up timing their retirement entirely around when they can get that earliest unreduced amount. Because again, the more money you have coming in from pensions, the less you have to drain from your own investments. But defined benefit pensions are a whole nother giant topic on their own, so I'm just gonna leave that there for now. Number three, debt is a serious party pooper. Obviously, if you have debt payments to make, then you will simply have to come up with additional money each month in order to cover them. So that adds to how much you will be pulling from your investments, which in turn drains them even quicker and can lead to a higher risk of running out of money in the long run. It can turn into a fairly nasty waterfall. Now, taking debt into retirement is almost never advisable, but sometimes you do what you gotta do, or maybe you're offsetting the debt with some rental income or whatever, but the point is, is that it adds risk to your situation, and if you're trying to retire early, it accentuates the risk. Let's just take a quick peek at Tyler and Skyler again. I'm going to throw in a $100,000 line of credit at 6% interest that they pay $1,000 a month on. And look at that. Drops them from 101% to 92% on track. All because they have to burn through more of their own investments earlier. Now that said, this can be offset entirely by our last point. Number four, semi-retirement is genius. I love semi-retirement. And I love it for at least three reasons. One, it allows you to slow down way earlier. And slowing down is seriously underrated. In fact, lots of times it can be better than stopping fully. Number two, it keeps you active and engaged. This is an important thing to foster no matter when you retire. And of course, there's more ways to do this than through a job. But working part-time can be a very easy way to do it. Number three, it's fun to make money. And I don't really have anything else to say about that. It just is. But let's go back to that first point for a sec, because I think a lot of people write off the idea of retiring early because they just don't think that they can afford it. But if you're willing to supplement your income with some part-time work for a while, especially during those early years where you don't have the pension income coming in, you might be surprised at what you can pull off. Let's hop back into Tyler and Skyler land and let's strip 400K out of their investments again like we did earlier. 
And there we go. Back down to 69% on track. But let's have them bridge that pension gap. Let's have them work part time, earning 20 grand a year each from age 55 until they hit 65. Well, based on the amount of money they want, this won't quite cut it. But if we bump their income to $30,000 each, look at that. We're right back to 101% on track. Again, this is not about the numbers. Tyler and Skylar might be asking for way more or way less than what you would need. Maybe you only need another $10,000 a year to make this work. I don't know. But the point is, semi-retirement can be an absolute game changer and just might be able to get you out of that hamster wheel a little bit earlier. Okay, now the last thing I want to mention is income splitting. If you're a couple, you can shave a fair amount off of your tax bill each year by splitting as much of your income as possible between each other. But a lot of the options for doing this, such as splitting your RIF income, don't start until you hit age 65. I'll drop a link below to a really great article on how all of this works. But for today, the main point that I want to make about this is that there could be a lot of years where you have a bunch of income that you cannot split. So you want to think ahead and set up your situation in such a way that you can avoid having all of the income in one person's name. Because the more income one person has, the higher their tax brackets will be. So if you can even it out between you, then you can keep the tax brackets lower. Now this isn't always possible to line up, but often it is. And one of the easiest ways to make it happen is by using a spousal RRSP. With the spousal RRSP, the higher income earner can still get the tax deductions for making the contributions, but the spouse can pull out the money and have it taxed in their hands. Anyway, this is not a video on how spousal RRSPs work, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. But it's another really good thing to keep eyeballs on if you plan to tap out early.